Hi guys, just going to show you a quick video on how I use my AMH and hopefully that helps you guys out. So I see a lot of interns and students put a ridiculous amount of flags uh, in their AMH, which is not a bad thing to put flags, but putting too much probably defeats the purpose as it probably just makes it confusing to find where or what all the flags mean and even to find them all. So what a lot of students don't know, some do, but I do know even some interns don't know, is that see at the AMH at the back, that they do have them all numbered and then all these boxes these all correspond to all these markings that are on the side so a good little trick is just to put the numbers so say the number endocrine here is 10 and then so you would write 10 next to the mark in here and then that way if you want to go to the start of the endocrine chapter you would just go find endocrine line it up to number 10 and then you'll go to the start of that marking and then you'll end up to the start of that. So that is the quickest way to come to find medicines in your AMH. So that's a super quick way there. And then you know all the medicines that will appear in the endocrine section. So uh, like I said, a lot of students put way too many flags. So this is the actual AMH that I used for when I was a intern. Uh, so I won't show you the year, or you realize I'm ancient, but see, I've only got three flags here and then three up here. Oh, a good another little trick is for the back spine bit here is to write like little notes here. So sometimes I got confused between what was in neurological and what was in psychotropics. So up here, I've written EP, you can't really see it too well, but I've written EP for epilepsy PD for Parkinson's disease and AD for Alzheimer's disease. So I knew that was within the neurological chapter. Uh, and then you just, so if I wanted to get something about Alzheimer's disease, like a medicine about Alzheimer's disease, uh, I would see that neurological has Alzheimer's disease. That's number 16. And then I would just line it up here and then go to the front of that uh, mark in there with the number 16. Now, uh, for helping you for exam situations. So I've been helping some interns right now with their written exam. So as an example of how to use this kind of function is there was a question and it said, there was five possible answers and they said, which one isn't used to help with uh, rheumatoid arthritis? It is not indicated for rheumatoid arthritis. So if you didn't know them, like say if you had no idea, um, so a lot of people will just look them all up individually and then just cross-reference that against the indications. But the quickest way to actually do that is to go to, you go to the back of your book, you'd see rheumatology is number 15. And then that would then, uh, then you would go to the front. So to the spine where number 15 is. And then that would take you to the front of the rheumatology chapter. So I'd go here to the very front of the rheumatology chapter and then right up here, uh, drugs for rheumatoid arthritis and then it lists them all so it lists every single medicine that they use for rheumatoid arthritis there and then from there I can see uh, on that list and then cross reference, reference them against that list and then I, I can instantly instantly see what's not on that list um, versus what's on here and then I would know that that's the um, answer that I'm looking for so that's the quickest way there you don't need to uh, individually look everything up and then that's kind of the quickest way to get comparative information because um, it gives you a scan of the whole book. Like if it said like uh, like which beta block is most likely to cause like a certain side effect, um, you could go to cardiovascular, uh, line that up against number six, and then you it would show you uh, the page number for beta blockers. Um, so I could just line that up against number six, go here. And then I would go anti-hypertensive beta blockers. So that's just down there. And then I can quickly see uh, comparative information on that, which is the quickest way to actually find a lot of drug info rather than looking at the index at the back, which can be very time consuming going to the index at the back. Now, in terms of flagging, uh, so I only flagged six things. So three here, uh, three up here. I'll show you what I flagged. I think I may have flagged more when I was a student, but I'm not entirely sure. But these are good places to flag anyways. Uh, so the very first one, um, that green one, that's just on like some general formulas and I've written some. So how to estimate creatinine clearance, uh, uh, prescribing obesity. I wrote down the formula for BSA. Uh, I'm assuming that popped up on some exams. That's why I wrote down the formula for BMI. Um, so physically hand wrote that in. Um, and then, so that was just it. For that page, then in the pink tab, 
I've just got uh, opioid comparative information right there and then how to convert them. I think that has popped up in some exams before, like needing to convert them. Uh, so that's a good thing to have as well on how to convert them. That's popped up in some exams as well, like how you would change someone from one opioid to another, the dosage guidelines. And then that blue tab is that one there. So that is just basically a guide to drug choices for selective infections. So as you know, like you can use a lot of different antibiotics for certain infections, but it's good to know what's the first choice and what's the alternative choices for them. So that's a good one to have flagged. Now, the yellow tabs at the top, the very first one that I flagged here is Rapamil. Um, so that's probably just because it interacts with a lot of things. I don't remember the actual rationale behind that, but I'm assuming that's why. Um, the next one that I flagged is Digoxin. So probably similar deal. Uh, so Digoxin interacts with tons of things, has a low therapeutic index, um, has like some loading doses that you need to double check as well. So a good one to have flagged. And then the final one that I had, uh, no surprise, uh, Warfarin. So I think everyone generally flags that. So once again, low therapeutic index interacts with tons of things. Um, and as you notice, all the yellow tabs are at the top, so they indicated that these were medicines. Um, and then all like kind of the reference guides were on the side, so they indicated that they were, they're not medicines. I'm just using that to quickly look up uh, references like formulas or uh, like antibiotics, like which one's appropriate for which, which indication. So that's another quick little tip So um, to kind of code it that way. Now, that's pretty much it. So if this, uh, I hope that helps and let me know.